It's one of my favorite things I've ever eaten in Africa. In this video, we're exploring the wide-ranging world of street food in Ethiopia's bustling capital. There is a lot of raw meat right here. Is the meat gonna give me worms? But first, let's back up. Our Ethiopian food journey begins here, in its capital of Addis Ababa. With a population of over 5 million, this place has it all. A blend of modern buildings and infrastructure pushed up against outdoor markets that go back centuries. Oh, this is great for B-roll. Today, I'm on a mission to see what makes Ethiopian street food unlike any other country in Africa. I'm gonna show you what we do when we eat together. I noticed nobody's trying to feed me. From factories cranking out thousands of their iconic flatbread. It's kind of stretchy. Like I could wear this as a corset around my oh, belly. Do not <laughs> To literal racks of raw meat that never see a flame before they reach your mouth. There's a ridiculous amount of raw meat. How many people would this feed? This could feed three people. It all starts here. This place is very busy. And you've just got vats and vats full of dough, fermenting flour. This is like the base of most or many meals here in Ethiopia. What is the name of this bread? Injera. I know what you're thinking. Sunny, it's just a pancake. But no, this is no ordinary sheet of carb-heavy bread. Injera has secrets that have made it the foundation of almost every dish throughout Ethiopia. And here, at Abaine's five-year-old bread bakery, Good day. <laughs> some of the most delectable injera in the city is being crafted. Perfect. It's all about the batter. Here, it's made with maize and teff flour, an ancient cereal grain that's been cultivated in Ethiopia for thousands of years. What is the secret behind making the perfect injera? You have to know the right amount of mixture. First, mix the teff flour with water and ferment it for one day. Add some maize to the mix and let the batter ferment even more. Why do you want it to be fermented? It gives it that sour kick. That's a taste that people like here? So definitely. Measuring by can, splashes of that grainy goodness land on the sizzling hot griddle, resulting in an Ethiopian cultural symbol. This is like a big, beautiful, sticky sheet. I love the texture on here because one side is smooth, then the other side is bubbly. It smells sour. Can I rip off a piece? Would you like some? Please. Okay. <laughs> Joining me, Mahi, a local content creator and a food enthusiast living in Addis Ababa. I can't make a good injera like this. Mine would have like holes everywhere. Is it okay just to eat it plain? Mmm. Sour, right? Sour, but it's not just about the flavor. It has a nice elasticity to it. It's kind of stretchy, a bit of a chewiness to it. Then the flavor just has some real punch. Oh, this guy. <laughs> He's like, this interview is going on way too long. <laughs> you busy? Check it, Bitcoin. In one day, how many times are you personally eating in Jira? Three, four, five. Really? I cannot personally go a day without it. In Jira. It's not just food, it's the implement, an edible utensil used to scoop up every last drop of deliciousness Ethiopia has to offer. Hearty stews, vibrant veggies, tantalizing sauces, or even this dish. I just don't know, what are the effects of eating so much raw meat? Which we'll be trying Cheers. very soon. But first, taking center stage is the crown jewel of Ethiopian cuisine, the national dish Dora Wat. Transcending time and tradition with a symphony of spices, tender chicken, and rich sauce, the dish is best served fresh, and it doesn't get fresher than this. Holy cow! What's happening? I don't know if we picked the best place for an interview. Okay. This place is wild. Where are we right now? We are in Mercato, the biggest, largest open market in Africa. We're gonna buy chicken for Dora Wat. <laughs> Stretching over several square miles in the heart of Addis Ababa, this market is a hub of commercial activity, trade, and cultural exchange. How often do you come to this market personally? If I want to buy something in bulk, it's uh -huh. cheaper here, and you can literally find anything here. What about the new iPhone? The smells in this market, especially where we are right now, there is such an aroma of mixed spices. Is this a country that really loves spices? Yes. Every plate that we have has many spices in it. The one spice that's almost in every dish is berberic. And it's a combo of different spices. But the baseline is chili powder. Dorot is very spicy. Are you ready for that? That's not it. <laughs> Hidden within the bustling labyrinth of the Mercado Market, a humble food vendor about to whip up this country's national dish. 
in Ethiopia. Instead of tediously plucking chicken feathers, the feathers and the skin are ripped off in one fell swoop. Then the meat is hacked up and soaked in a treatment of salty lemon juice. Next, the sauce. Saute onion with cooking oil. Then add the master spice of any good Ethiopian dish, berberic. Then water, garlic and onion salt. Finally, add the meat, clarified butter and hard-boiled eggs for even more protein. Let it simmer for six hours to achieve the rich and complex flavors that make it famous. Since Dorawat is a labor of love and a practice of patience, it's most often made in homes for special occasions. So food stall over Yidin Akachu has prepared this dish just for us. There's a lot here. There's the chicken, there's the eggs, there's the injera, and then this kind of stew all around it. Do you know how to eat? How to eat? No. Should I show you? Yes. Okay. This yes. is your like fork or spoon. Scoop okay. it up. You can add the eggs or the meat if you want to. This is the type of food, if you put it in your Tupperware container, it's gonna be stained orange Definitely. forever. All right, so you don't want it too much on your fingers. Mm. Wow, the spice is nothing but kick. It's an extreme flavor. And this is coming from the berbere, right? Exactly. To me, it seems like berbere is to Ethiopia what masala is to India. Yeah. How many different spices are inside of it? More than 12. More than 12. So, 13. <laughs> 12 is in a ridiculous number. There are black seed, garlic, ginger, cumin, to name a few. Turmeric? Not really. No. I don't taste turmeric. Erase no. that. It tastes chili powder? Yeah. A lot of chili powder. I got some chicken here. Mm. Oh my god. The chicken is really tender, very heavy, very oily. It's like it's got personality, it's got flavor, it's got some edge to it. I'm in love with this. Mm. I forgot to mention. So one of the reasons we eat like this is we feed each other. I'm gonna show you what we do when we eat together. This is called Gersha. So you met this guy today? Yeah. And that's normal? Yeah. Meals in Ethiopia are often served on a communal platter. Food is shared among family and friends. Do you want some egg? <laughs> and the gesture of actually physically feeding someone is an act of affection Don't be shy. and respect. Can men feed men? When you're eating together, it's fine. It's a ritual of bonding, a celebration of togetherness. I noticed nobody's trying to feed me. And I, right now, oh. I'm definitely feeling the bond. Very polite. How long have you had a shop here? One year. Your shop is located right next to this very peculiar, distinct alley. About every 10 seconds, there's a man walking through here with a sack of coffee beans that weighs 220 pounds. That's more than me. Meanwhile, you have women lining the alleyway here. What are these women working on? The world's most socially acceptable addiction can trace its heritage back centuries to the ancient coffee forests of the Ethiopian plateau. Those are coffee beans that come from the farm. The women, they pick out the bad one. After this part, they get to grade it and then it goes to sell. Here, it's all about high quality Arabica, consumed domestically and exported all over the world. I know around the world that Ethiopian coffee is really iconic, but how is it perceived here in Ethiopia? It's a very big deal in Ethiopia. You get to have it maybe two, three times a day. Is Ethiopian coffee strong? It's very strong. But coffee here isn't just about flavor or a caffeine kick, it's about the experience. I love coffee very much. That's why I open the shop and every day I prepare nice coffee. I serve Oh, wow. Very nice mood. <laughs> Thank <Yeah>. you. <laughs> Welcome to Teru's Coffee Shop. Right now, she's executing a centuries-old traditional coffee ceremony called Buna. Do you smell that? It smells like popcorn. That could be this over here, though. Mm, yeah. There's the roasting. So this happens. Thank you. Are you cleansing yourself? What's happening yeah. exactly? So you're smelling the coffee. They don't do this at Starbucks at all. Exactly. There's the grinding. Your pestle is basically a giant piece of rebar. Some of them are made of wood and some of them are like that. Yeah, some of them come from like a collapsed bridge. <laughs> and the brewing. The performance demands full presence, urging participants to appreciate each step with great care and attention to detail. That's like 15 scoops. Don't you like your coffee strong and dark? That's gonna be really strong. <laughs> Do you want sugar or no? I'm just gonna go black. I wanna see what the coffee really oh. tastes like. What is this one right here? This is raw. So these are basically herbs. Huh, it's fresh. It's like a little bit fruity or citrusy. Put it in your coffee. Just mix, mix it, it up. up. Oh, I love that. And that's gonna give it flavor? Oh, of course. Do you smell mm, it? Yeah? yeah. Really fragrant. Yeah. Showing? Yeah. <laughs> I got a buzz. Yup. That's what I'm saying. Woo! I taste the roux a little bit. It's fragrant. The coffee is black. It's powerful, but it's still really smooth. Ethiopian coffee is like world famous, and I can see why. Thank you. How far back does coffee go in Ethiopia? I don't know the year, but I know the story of Kaldi. Kaldi discovered coffee. 
He was herding his goats, and one of his goats went and ate the coffee, and he became very hyper. So Kali was very curious, what did he just eat? So he tried it, and he was hyper, and that's how it was discovered. It all started here. Mm -hmm. Coffee is an amazing drug because it said that the world wouldn't be even half as productive if coffee didn't exist. And half as beautiful, I would say. And half as beautiful, <laughs> yeah. Soon, we'll see how a whole raw animal carcass becomes one of this country's most unique food experiences. Are these guys chefs or are they just butchers? But first, <laughs> once you've checked out Dorawa and coffee, you can't leave Ethiopia without trying this at least a dozen times. We've come to Hannah Maje restaurant for this. This one is bayanatu. It usually ranges from six items or sometimes even to 30. Bayanatu is a traditional, vibrant Ethiopian platter structured with injera as the base, then topped with an assortment of various colorful spiced up vegetables and stews. It's designed to be meat free, yet it feels like nothing's missing. So everything here is vegetarian? Vegan. Vegan? Yes. Bayanatu is usually eaten during fasting season. Are you someone who participates in the fasting? Um. <laughs> uh, uh. Joining me for the second half of today's street food tour, Ada, an enthusiastic food lover who showcases the wonders of Ethiopian cuisine through her platform. We have two breads. We have a middle bread and an outer bread. Which bread should I use? You can go for any bread. I think I'm overthinking. <laughs> What are we looking at here? This is called misir, a stew made with saute onion, Burberry seasoning, red lentils, garlic, and vegan nidder kiba, or Ethiopian plant-based spiced butter. I like to combine a spicy dish with a vegetable. Is it spinach? Collard greens. greens. Collard greens. Cheers. Mmm. Oh, that's fantastic. The greens give it some texture and so much flavor. It has a simple spicy tomato flavor, but then there's a deep savoriness underneath. Oh, that's fantastic. With the lentils that are in here, it gives some texture too, so it almost feels like you could be eating ground beef or something like that. It doesn't feel like something's missing. Absolutely. We have so many stews on the injera bread, but we have this on this side. Why is that? Because uh, that's the start of the show. This is shiro, and here's how it's made. Saute onion and garlic in hot oil. Then add water and chickpea powder and cook until it thickens up. Add onion salt, kiva, and bell pepper. Finally, serve it hot in a clay pot. Oh yeah, look at that texture. It's like a melted gas station cheese. <laughs> Toss it back. Mmm, wow. Unbelievable. Incredibly creamy, savory, and it almost has a shrimp-like flavor to it. Did they put shrimp in there on accident? No. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. I think what could influence the flavor is actually the pot itself. To me, it's uh, unbelievable that there's no butter inside because it tastes buttery and it just has like a little bit of seafood essence that I'm dreaming That's of. That's why they call Ethiopian food vegan heaven. The idea of vegan food, has that been going on for generations, for hundreds of years? Oh, absolutely. Over 60% of Ethiopia is Orthodox Tewahedo Christian, who practice fasting more than 210 days per year, up to a whopping 55 days at a time. But to fast here doesn't mean to abstain from food completely. Fasting meaning abstaining from all animal products. Absolutely, and sometimes people also avoiding alcohol during fasting season. <laughs> That's not that fun. But when the time for fasting is over, Folks here approach meat with an equal and opposite intensity. Can you tell me where we are? I don't know what's happening. Because I see meat here, and then I see platters here, and then it just goes out. And I don't see any like Korean barbecue grills. People are eating raw meat here, aren't they? Yes, absolutely. We've just arrived at Yoma Butcher. Sir? Put her there. A four-decade-old restaurant relentlessly focused on one thing. First of all, can I say, nice rack. Your meat rack, it's nice. Right here, this one. Are you only serving beef raw? No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's saying it's our house specialty, but there are other places where you can also get goat meat or sheep meat. The meat's looking pretty fresh. Could you slice this off a piece? In this tradition, the butcher becomes the chef. So he's slicing off what I would consider to be not a small piece. Selecting the freshest cuts of meat from the animal carcass and serving up platefuls to a crowd. So right here we have the cubed raw beef. Now, there's nothing that unusual about raw beef. I mean, steak tartare, it's famous all over the world. In Japan, they have raw beef nigiri on the rice. Here, the biggest difference is this kind of presentation. The fact that you can see a whole slab of cow just hanging right here, and the folks here taking big chunks off of it. But this looks fantastic. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Hmm, not too tough. A bit tender, lean, but a little bit of fat residue. Overall, enjoyable. 
What do you think? It's my first time. You are? You've never eaten this? Mm-mm. Does it taste similar to anything else you've had before? No. Would you do it again? Maybe. Okay, right there. <laughs> well, you can't ever reveal your weakness to me. <laughs> Cheers. If slabs of raw beef sashimi aren't your thing, maybe you'd prefer an Ethiopian beef tartare. This is called kitfo. The aim is to achieve a smooth, even, gushy texture. Is there a certain cut that people prefer above any other cut? This part, right below the hump. First, fresh beef is minced. Then add jalapeno, onion, and mint minta, a local spice blend. Add a touch of olive oil and mix it well. This looks like meat heaven. Absolutely. <laughs> it looks fantastic. I cannot believe it. There is a lot of raw meat right here. I don't think we should start with that. Okay. Next to the raw meat, cooked meat. Yes. Something you call tibs? Yes, it means fried. Tibs, a savory stir fry, showcasing tender pieces of lamb or beef. The meat is flash fried in hot oil before being sauteed with onions, garlic, and jalapeno. Serve atop injura, then it's ready to tantalize your taste buds. Is this any certain part of the cow? Usually the round beef is really good for our tips. Oh my god, <laughs> this is like to die for. It's rich, it's slightly chewy, slightly tender, and 100% delicious. Yes. The onions make such a big difference because they are slightly caramelized and sweet. On the side here, we have some different sauces. This is really spicy. I think I can handle it. Okay. Is that too much? Uh, Don't care. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tolerable. I like it. The part that's throwing me off is that there's a ridiculous amount of raw meat. How many people <laughs> would this feed? It's so much meat. This could feed three people. Why is raw meat such a prevalent thing in this country? It's a delicacy here in Ethiopia. As much as there is vegan food, the meat-eating culture here is also very huge. Wow, look at this dainty little piece you gave me. <laughs> it's so small. You want a big one? No, okay. I don't. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a dip in the mustard. Oh, wow. That mustard has like a little bit of horseradish or something in there. It almost feels like a hit of wasabi. For a moment, I felt like I was eating Japanese food. <laughs> so here we have kind of like a steak tartare with spices inside. I oh. recommend the injera ah, for this. yes. So treat it like a stew. <laughs> Cheers. Hold, which is a good sign. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to be like warm. You don't want the fats leaking out. Mm -hmm. You can taste the garlic and the jalapeno. It's got some spice to it. A little bit oily in a good way. Overall, I like it. Is the meat gonna give me worms? Possibly, which is why traditionally, after having a variety of raw meat, we usually follow it up with a traditional drink called arake. This is an Ethiopian version of vodka, if you will. Oh, it smells really strong. All right, cheers to killing the worms inside of us. <laughs> cheers, yeah. <sighs> Better than vodka, right? Yeah, I feel very <laughs> warm right here. I feel like I could put that in my gas tank if I ran out of fuel. <laughs> This country is not a monoculture. There are so many different tribes, groups, ethnicities, people from different backgrounds, people with different recipes and traditions. So how does all that factor into what is known as Ethiopian food? That's a good question. Ethiopian food is very diverse and offers more than injera. And there are even parts of Ethiopia that do not consume injera. So what you see here and what represents Ethiopia doesn't even scratch the surface to what they Ethiopian cuisine offers. My team's only spending a couple days in Addis Ababa. Right after this, we're flying south and we're going into the Omo Valley where we're gonna film several videos with the local indigenous tribes. Wow. Do you have any advice for me? I would say embrace the culture because it's quite different. So be open-minded. Oh. So everything I've seen here in Addis Ababa, when I go there, is it just gonna be completely different? Brace yourself. So he's cutting open the bile sack now. I think he'll just put a few drops on there, I'm hoping. That's a shitload. Elevate your style with our brand new clothing collection. Rock out in our threads, feel the thrill of culinary adventures, and celebrate with us in style. Head on over to beffers.shop today. There is an injera right here beside me. May I manhandle it? <laughs> sure, man. Hey, it's called consent, okay? <laughs> Even with inanimate objects, <laughs> I ask their permission. I'm not trying to get in any kind of trouble. I've come too far. You good? You busy? Check it, Bitcoin. <laughs> it's still down. Trust me. <laughs> it's still down. You checked? I invested at 60,000. You know, like an expert. I just don't know what are the effects of eating so much raw meat. You can get some type of like tapeworm. Tapeworm. Uh huh. But you know what's good about tapeworm? <laughs> They help you lose weight. Because you think you're like, oh, I'm such a pig, but the worm is actually a pig. Because the worm's <laughs> eating all the food and the nutrition. And I've been trying to get a tapeworm, actually, to be honest. 
Does Marcato just mean market? It does. You can find literally anything in here. Can you find this guy looking at us right now? Definitely. Holy can you? Cow. What's okay. happening? I got your back. Don't worry. Okay. I saved you twice. Do we just eat it with our fingies? So you can either eat it with the injera, scoop it up, or use the bread. I'm going to go like this. Sure, that works too. <laughs> oh At what age do people here get started drinking coffee? I was 11. Are you putting a lot of sugar inside? Yeah, of course. Because I don't think a child would like this bitter taste. No. It's the same reason they don't like beer. You would add more sugar. Yeah, I'm not saying I try to give kids <laughs> beer all the time in a van that I have. <laughs> oh my God. But that doesn't sound I've noticed they don't love it. Boom, that is the end of video number one here in Ethiopia, but we have a lot more in store. After this, we're going to the Omo Valley and it's going to get wild. But before that, I want to say a huge thank you to the two co-hosts who joining me today. First of all, Mahi. You can find Mahi right here. And Ida. You can find Ida's social media information right here. I hope you enjoyed this video. We have a lot more to come. Otherwise, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. Oh, a taxi. Let's go. Just kidding. Sorry. It was a joke. It was a joke the whole time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry.